Live reveal. Here it is, Jerry. Here it is, this everyone. is brand new. Wow. Oh, Boom. Sick. Got it. Oh, let's go. <laughs> Got it. Got it. That was crazy. Got it. Dude, that's so <laughs> it's exactly at 300K. We've got a great partnership with Tops. They've loaded us up. So for the baseball collector, for the soccer collector, this entire island is going to be full of value boxes of different sports, different players, etc., as well as over there. With cards, it's more of an experience. Like you want to actually go into a place and be able to be immersed in it. And so I really wanted something I could bring to the, to the entire audience, to the world that everybody could enjoy. Sports card collectors, welcome to the largest card shop in the world. Today, we're at Cards HQ in Atlanta, Georgia. 14,000 square feet, $4 million to create. Let's go hang out with Jeff Wilson today and show you guys the card shop of the future. We're getting an exclusive sneak peek at Cards HQ. This is amazing, guys. It is a huge warehouse, 14,000 square feet, getting an exclusive look into the hobby. Let's go see what the future looks like. Hey, Jay. Welcome, man. What's up, man? Welcome to Cards HQ. I can't wait for you to see this Thank place. You, man. I'm pumped, man. Yeah, come on in. Just get a first look. Wow. I feel like I'm going into like an NBA game for the first time, like as a rookie. This is crazy. It's huge, beautiful, good lighting. We're just putting the finishing touches on it now. We've got some of the showcases and everything covered because we're doing a little bit of work to get ready for our grand opening, but we're going to be ready, man. All right, so Jeff, show us around. So right when you walk in the front door, you're going to actually see a lot of Pokemon and and Magic and Lorcana and Yu-Gi-Oh! And then you get into Star Wars and you get into Marvel. We put a lot of these non-sports cards and trading card games up front because we know that people, people know to come here for sports cards, but we want the world to know that we also are leaning into those other parts of collecting as well. So we've got a lot of showcases full of that plus sealed product back there. These showcases, when they're fully full, can hold about 10,000 cards. 10,000 10, slaps, 10,000 slaps. Everything in the showcase is a slap. So everything's slap, no raw cards in the showcases. Wow. Then on top of that, this entire island, as well as that island over there, these are gonna be full of boxes of raw cards. So these are gonna be, this is what we're calling our, our value bin island. And then we've got another value bin island over there. We're gonna have over 100,000 additional cards out for people to flip through. These will all be raw cards. These will all be $20 or less raw. Wow. And so that's our strategy. Slabs in the showcases, raw cards out here, 100,000 plus cards for people to come enjoy. And you know, something I, I talk about with Burbank a lot is Rob always says, we, we wanna put hands on cards. Yes. How important is that for this we shop? We think it's extremely important. Honestly, a lot of, a lot of the concepts from the shop we brought from Burbank, because obviously Rob and Ryan do such a great job with that store. And he's always preached the importance of not just having the fancy high-end slabs, but having the lower value cards that the, that the everyday collector can spend time flipping through and really finding it. So we believe in that model. They do a great job of it at Burbank. We're gonna do a lot of it here as well. So we're gonna have, you know, when you come in on our opening day, this entire island is gonna be full of value boxes of different sports, different players, et cetera, as well as over there. And it's all gonna be, you know, dollar, two dollar, five dollar, top loaded cards for you to flip through. Well, with any card shop, you gotta have wax, Jay, right? People love to come in and rip boxes. They want sealed product. And so we've tried to lean into that pretty heavily in our store. So you got a big wax wall here behind the front counter. We've got another, a couple others around the corner for TCG. These types of showcases we think are actually really great for displaying wax. Um, we've got a great partnership with Tops. They've loaded us up with all of their latest product. We've got a lot of it. So for the baseball collector, for the soccer collector, people who like Bowman U, they can come in here. We've got, we got everything really, really good. Wow. But we've got football as well. We've got basketball as well. We're, we're leading into all sports. But yeah, so you can see, you know, the variety of, of uh, products that we've got, all the new releases. Stadium Club just came out, for example. So it's not just about the current releases. If you look as we go down, you'll find some boxes from, you know, five years ago, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, too. It's all kind of mixed in. So how many of your, I gotta ask you, that's obviously you got your first baseball card. Yeah. Like for you. We gotta get you one, Jay. I know, We man. gotta get you in I, there. Wait. Hey, Tops. Let's do it. Hey, Tops, get Jay a baseball card. Let's, Let's go. Do it. Let's, Let's do go. It. So for you, like pulling your own baseball card. Uh, how often was that card? Like, did you pull it? I still, I still, I've still you? never pulled my own baseball card. You still, I still never pulled it. How short print is my, your card? It's it's hard to it's very hard to find. I believe they're one out of every three to five cases. So you're talking like sixty to hundred boxes. 
So it's I've still never pulled it. They're very I short print. Shocked. They're very short print. Yeah, and so. Uh, my son has pulled it. My son pulled one. I've never pulled one. Wow. And so, you know, I'm gonna continue to hunt and uh, try to find one someday. But we wanted to bring some of that in the store. We're gonna do a little promotion that if anyone buys a box of Big League and pulls my card, they're gonna get a $100 uh, gift card to the store. That's awesome. So, little, bounty. Little, 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 bounty. Extra, little extra bounty yeah. if anyone gets my card there. I didn't realize how valuable they were until I had the Ryan Johnson PSA yes. 10. Yeah. And I put it on my whatnot uh -huh. and somebody bought it for $150. Yeah, I know. Like Ryan Johnson's stock is up. Yeah, do you know, stock do you ever is up. Do you ever check your price? I haven't recently. I was at first. At first it was What was the was highest it's ever sold for? Uh, one sold for I think 350. Yeah, you are selling yeah. for more than like a baseball yeah. player. Yeah, I, I, which is which is pretty wild. That's it's, pre it's awesome though. I mean, it you know the awesome. uh, it's it's an honor. It's an honor for sure. Cool. In the early stages of tops, getting into the hobby and fanatics, there was a lot of panic. But it sounds like your relationship with them, they're very they're advocating for hobby shops. I think I honestly I think tops and fanatics are really doing a lot of the right things. Uh, there were a lot of hobby shops that were worried at first that they were going to you know, try to sell everything direct and cut shops out. I think they understand the importance of the connection between the, the shop and the customer. It's the touch point and people need to experience cards. It's not like buying a piece of apparel. You know, fanatics can put all their apparel on their website. You don't necessarily, you know, you can, you can see the shirt and the shirt design and understand, oh, that's a cotton t-shirt. I, I, I get a decent feel of it and order it online. But with cards, it's more of an experience. Like you want to actually go into a place and be able to be immersed in it. And that's what we've tried to create here is to create that experience. And yes, it's great to buy cards online and find the ones you want, but like you can't, the collector experience isn't there to the same degree as it is coming into a card shop, having staff that's really helpful, can help you out, can talk to you about different types of cards, meeting other collectors, doing trades, opening a box, and just enjoying the hobby. That's like that touch point is what stores bring. And I think that Tops has been very great about wanting to support that. Yeah, because I think we've needed marketing in the hobby. And you know, they always ask, how could you bring someone who doesn't know anything about cards into yeah. cards? And what, what is your answer to that question? Like, how can you bring somebody who knows nothing about this hobby? How do we make it more attractive for them? A couple of ideas. So first of all, this is, I think the, a store like this, I think is a fantastic touch point for people who aren't familiar because they can come in and they can see and they can experience and they can see things that they might like. See, I mean, this is really in some ways like an art store, an art shop, you know, browse the displays, see what appeals to you, see what you find. There were people here last night that were not collectors that had just, you know, came in because they saw a line and what was going on. We actually sold out of a lot of like pop culture cards last night. We had like seven Taylor Swift cards in our showcases. All seven of them sold last night wow. to people who weren't sports card collectors who just showed up and they were like, these cards are beautiful. That's awesome. It's Taylor Swift and they bought one. And so I think having this stuff on display that way is big. And then the second thing is education. You know, we got to be able to educate and sports cards are complicated. Like for people getting into it for the first time, it's complex, like all the different sets all the different parallels, like, you know, different box configurations, what's valuable, what's not valuable, you know, what's, you know, what is this card and how does this card compare to this other card? It's really complicated. Yeah. And so to be able to educate, I think is a big part of all of this as well. That's awesome. I yeah. love that. So we've seen that you guys have Pokemon cards, modern basketball, modern football. Yeah. And you actually have a lot of vintage cards. An entire aisle, this whole entire thing is just vintage baseball. We've also got some vintage basketball. We've also got some vintage football as well. First of all, vintage plays a huge role in the hobby for collectors. And, and that's one of those things that there may be people that you know haven't ever touched or experienced the ultra modern cards, but they remember some of these cards from their childhood or whatever. So we wanted to allow you we wanted to connect with them as well so jeff you're really innovative here and i know you went to japan and you went to asia and did some research and you know when you first went there i was like i feel like he's gonna learn a lot there and i really want to pick your brain yeah. um and you said something about japan with this upright display so tell me what did you learn overseas yes. and like what did you implement with this well i mean quite simply the card shops in japan they did a better way of presenting their cards than the card shops most of the card shops in the u.s do all of the cards were upright they were all, all vertical and you could walk up and down the aisles just like this and it almost looked like you were browsing an art gallery. You could see all of the cards so well. And you know, in the US, obviously most stores have these showcases where you look down, down, you go to a card show and everything's all about looking down at a card show. It's not as visually appealing. It's not as good for window shopping. And I, I was in Japan and I went to some of these card shops and at that time we were already planning on doing the card store and I picked up my phone and I called my partners back here in the US. I said, guys, I said, we have to figure out how to get these Japanese displays because they are way better than what we have in the US. 
you can't buy these in the US. We called all the different US showcase manufacturers and said, hey, how do we get this? And they all said, we don't, we don't have that line of product. So we had to custom order these from China. We did custom, you know, custom specs on how we wanted the whole thing to be. Wow. And, uh, but it came together. We had, a, we had a US company build the inserts for them and a Chinese company build the actual frames and the glass for all the showcases. And I'm really happy with how they came out. I love it too because you're right, it is like an art display and at the same time when someone really wants to buy a card, I mean, you you just send an employee over, unlock it, yeah. and the person can put their hand on the card they can. and they grab can it. They can pull it right out and, and look at, the, at it. And the, at the same time, yes. they could comp it, they could yeah. look it up, they can yeah. do what they need to do. I just think it's like just a better way to browse and that's the thing, you know, you want to build that collector experience, you want to get people in the shop who maybe aren't that familiar with this and you want them to just be able to walk in, up and down the aisles and just see a lot of beautiful stuff. And I mean, this vintage aisle, this is beautiful. Yeah. I mean, all of these card designs. I mean, look, you know, 1958, 1959, 1955, 1966. I mean, look at this beautiful Topps card here. You know, this is like, it's all of these designs. This is like it historical like historical pieces of art. I mean, it's that's, so beautiful. That's what Steve Aoki was saying when he was looking at the cards that they, he tr he thought they were essentially like pieces of art. Yeah. They, were, they, were, they weren't just assets. They were, right. they were, they were also something you could collect. Like in, like the Mona Lisa, yeah. you had the Mickey Mantle, you had yeah. the Sandy Koufax, the yeah. Jordan 86 to someone, yeah. the eye appeal was there. Yeah. And we all look at it like centering, condition, yeah. coloring. People that are passionate about art are passionate about art. I'm not passionate about art. I'm passionate about this so yeah. it's it's like when you're passionate about something like that you're of course you're gonna appreciate it more than most people I agree I agree it's beautiful obviously not everybody is gonna be able to come out to Atlanta and come to the card shop but you have a solution for that yeah let me show you so this is our live selling cabana for whatnot so we're gonna be in here we've got this set up so that we're gonna be able to you know live auction singles on whatnot we're gonna take cards out of our showcases that maybe haven't moved in a little while. So cards that we want our showcases to always be really fresh, like stuff that we, we don't really want cards lingering in our showcases for more than like 30 days. Because if you come to our shop and then come back two months later, we want you to see entirely fresh inventory. We don't want cards to be there for six months. So our strategy is that once a card has lingered in the showcase for a little while, we'll then bring it over here and we'll put it live on whatnot every single night to auction. So this is our live selling cabana. But we set this up a little bit differently than what you typically see because it's open to the card shop. So the idea is that you know customers who are shopping can also come over here and as we're live selling, you're able to also interact with the customers. In this one, we actually turned it back this direction so that as you're live selling, people can see the entire shop and all the customers in the background, which is not anything that currently happens on whatnot. So we wanted to kind of give it a unique spin and make our auctions feel a little more interactive with the shop than what you normally see. Something I noticed that's different, and I, I'm just curious. I've gone to a lot of shops in the last year and a yeah. half, and they have glass. Right. Which honestly They're blocks off the interaction. The interaction. Yes. And you, you're not gonna, you're not no. gonna glass in here. This is totally open. Man, that's yeah. Because I, like, my question to you is, where did you get this idea? Well, so you know where I got this idea from. Paradise Card Breaks in Las Vegas. They've got a shop in Las Vegas and they do a lot of breaking. And I walked into their shop one day and they had their breaker set up at a kind of a desk in the corner of the shop. And the shop was loud, people were trading, and there was the breaker and he was live and he was breaking as it was all happening. And I said to the owner of the store, I said, isn't that loud? Can people hear like, and the owner said, no, I love it. He goes, they can, you can hear a little bit of the crowd noise in the background. We got a good mic, but you can hear a little bit in the background. He's like, but I want people on the stream to feel like there's things happening, that there's excitement, that this person is in an area where things are going on and not just off in a glassed in studio. And I was like, man, I like that idea. That makes a lot of sense. So we've even built another little wrinkle into it, which is that this camera here, oh. Can, can, it's a pan tilt zoom that can show anything going on in the store. Yeah. So like, for example, if we're here live selling on whatnot, and then somebody over there pulls a big card or someone in one of the things, we can, actually, we can actually show that image live. The idea here was like, how do we merge the in-store experience with the live streaming experience for people who aren't able to be in store? So for people who can't come to Atlanta, how do we let them feel like they're still experiencing Cards HQ? And this is one of the ways we're bridging that gap. So this one, Jay, is for breaking, right? So just like we're gonna be doing a lot of live selling on whatnot, we're gonna be breaking as well. And so these are our breaker studios. So, you know, our breakers are gonna be able to sit here and they'll, you know, obviously this thing's still being set up, so there's little things everywhere, but we're gonna go live with our breaks in a few weeks. 
and we're doing an overhead camera. So the breaker's gonna be sitting here, opening up packs, they can see the stream, you know, what people are commenting, everything like that. They got their mic that's gonna swing over as they're doing it. We've really put a lot of effort into setting these up with really incredible cameras, really good quality lighting, really good you know computer setups, overhead cameras, the entire thing, because we want to bring like a level of production quality to breaking that matches our you know YouTube content. When you wanted to do content here, did you think there was more opportunities for content here versus what you were doing before? Like what changed? A hundred percent. So we we actually are kind of thinking of this entire shop as a content factory as well. I hope that once we actually open the doors that, you know, we get interesting collectors coming in with cool collections and just lots of stories walking in the front door and we want to capture all of that. So I think you'll see over time our content evolve to be a little more around like capturing the stories of the people who come in and then transactions with them, you know, whether it's trades or we're buying cards from them or whatever, but like what's the backstory of their collection and what cards they have and everything like that. So something I've focused on really heavily on my channel and when I'm at shows, shops, is I think to elevate the hobby, we need to bring the youth in. You could be 10 years old to 63 years old. Yeah. The 63 year old can get the 10 year old back in them and the 10 year old can experience new things. How important uh, is kids to the hobby and like how are you incorporating that in the shop? Yeah, well I'm always inspired by you. You do a great job with the kids and you can see it every time I see you at a card show, there's kids running up to you and it's awesome to, it's awesome to see. I completely agree with you. I mean, obviously kids are critical to the hobby. I was in this when I was a kid, right? So it also kind of reconnects with my own youth. And I've got kids, you know, a 12 year old, a nine year old, a seven year old who are like kind of prime ages for all of this as well. So we really want to make the shop kid friendly. So these tables here are reserved specifically for kids to trade. Wow. So this is our car kids trade zone. And so we want kids to be able to come into the store and hang out here and trade with other kids during the days. They don't have to buy anything. They can just come in and, you know, bring their cards and set them out and trade. That's a big piece of it. And then this whole area is covered up right now because we're doing a little bit of last minute work painting and, and you know, doing some stuff with the store. These are giant couches um, and chairs and everything like that. And obviously TVs, we're gonna have all of the games on. We got all the sports packages and everything like that. And the idea here is that collectors of all ages, adults and kids, can come into the store, they can hang out, they can bring their cards, they can set them out, they can trade with each other, they can talk to each other, they can watch the games. This is all about making it more than just a transactional card shop. This is all about making it an experience. And that's what we really try to go for and lean into with this entire place. When I think of this shop, I see elements of you've done research going into shops. You know, I, when I go to shops, obviously I've always thought about opening a shop. Everyone dreams of that, right? Um, for me, it's just timing right now. It just doesn't make any sense. But for you, I noticed that you incorporate a lot of, like from other card shops, brands. Who was the biggest inspiration for this shop? For you gosh it's hard to say any one because there were so many card shops so many wonderful card shops all over the country you know like you i've had the the honor of being able to go and travel and see a bunch of shops and i will say that there are so many i mean from aa mint down in south florida to joe davis and got baseball cards here in atlanta to jaspies out in hermosa beach of course burbank i mentioned paradise cards already but there's so many like game day in las vegas there's so many different shops that i saw along the way countless numbers where I was like, that's really cool, that's really cool, that's really cool, that's really cool. And so all those ideas over the last few years just kind of went into the back of my mind. And I kind of, you know, started to piece them all together. I've seen, you know, there's stores like LA Sports Guards out in LA, they got like awesome modern designs and they design wise, a lot of the shops in Japan I mentioned, I mean, just so many, I could list probably 50 different shops that like in some manner, drew, I drew some inspiration from for this thing. I've experienced this before in my career where I just know, some, I know when I want to do something. Yeah. Like the tour, it was just, it made sense. When did it make sense to open this car shop? Like what inspired you? Like, do you remember that moment? It really made sense when I found the right guys to do it with because I always had the idea of wanting to do a card shop, but running a card shop, there is so much operationally to it, right? It's buying the cards is not easy. Getting enough inventory to fill all of the showcases. I mean, that's a massive, massive job in and of itself. Not to mention, you know, hiring the staff and all the operations and security and shipping and receiving and all that kind of, I mean, there's so many elements to it, especially when you add in live selling and breaking and all that kind of thing. So for me, it was, I got a great team at Sports Card Investor and a great team at Market Movers, but we do content and we build software, right, apps. So I need the, I need the card transactional people. And so it was when I really connected with Ryan 
and Carter, who are my two partners in the shop. These guys have been on the road hustling full time for the last three or four years, going to card shop shows all over the country. They both are making a full time living in cards just through their own you know, hustle. We're gonna buy, we're gonna sell, we're gonna buy, we're gonna sell. And they did it during a time when the market the last couple of years was down and down and down, yet they still figured out how to grind it out and make a nice business for themselves. So when I connected with those guys and I'm like, they would bring the element that I need for this to be successful, which is that savvy around buying, that savvy around doing the transactions, doing the deals, grinding it out, going to all of these shows, acquiring inventory. And so once, once, I, once I saw them and I'm like, this could all work together, that was kind of the moment it was like, everyone was like, yeah, let's go, let's do this. All right, we got a live reveal. Here it is, Jerry, it is, this everyone. is brand new. This is the table for our brand new breaking arena inside Cards HQ. So what this is, Jay, wow. is that, in fact, take a seat over here, sit down. It kind of it feels like I'm about to play some poker. Well, that's right, because it's a custom, it's a, basically a custom poker table that is for, specifically for card breaking and is streaming live on YouTube 24-7. Wow. So what the idea here is, Jay, is this, is this is not for us, this is for our customers. Any customer can come into the store kid, adult, whomever, and they could buy any box, even just a little blaster box. And they can bring it over here and they can sit at this table and they can open the box here on camera. And if you look up there, you can see that you got the card cam. So as I'm wow. opening cards right here, the so audience over here on these bleachers can be watching it. So you got, a, you got an in-store audience watching it. And then you've also, it's also streaming live. So if you came in the store and bought a box and you've got some friends back in California and you call them up and you're like, hey, I just bought a box of Flawless at, uh, at Cards HQ. I'm about to bust it open. You know, it doesn't yeah. have to be Flawless, obviously. Yeah, yeah, it could be course. a $20 box, it could yeah. be anything. But you could call them up, you could say, go on Cards HQ's YouTube, I'm about to sit down at the table and do it. And they can log in and they can, just like you're a breaker, they can watch the whole thing. You mentioned, okay, so you just mentioned Cards HQ YouTube. Yeah. Is that going to be, that's gonna be separate from Sports Card Investor? Yeah. How are you gonna balance out the build for each brand for content? Well, you know, we'll figure it out. At first, we're mainly gonna be still continuing like to lean into sports card investor stuff. But we've talked about over time, maybe we do, maybe we do some Cards HQ specific stuff on the Cards HQ channel, I don't know. But at first, it's gonna be sports card investor and then Cards HQ will just be bringing this arena content to you. I noticed with your brand, you started out with, obviously you said software, but it's, it was mainly content, right? Mm -hmm. What was the pivot to this business development. How do you transition from content to I'm gonna open it, like the card shop? Like it just seems like a big change. Yeah, well, you know, the one thing that obviously everybody who watches my content and everybody who watches your content loves is cards. That's the one thing we all have in common, right? Like so over time I've introduced products to my audience. Like obviously I, you know, built the Market Movers app and the sports card investor app. That stuff appeals to a segment of my audience. You know, there's a segment that that is really into you know trading or flipping or they really care about the value of their collection and so they're willing to pay for an app to track it but that's only a segment then you got a lot of other people that are more just casual that are more just you know I occasionally buy a pack I occasionally go to a card show but you know they're more just kind of casual they don't feel like they need to you know have an app or whatever they just kind of you know are, are just having fun as part of it and so I really wanted something I could bring to the, to the entire audience, to the world that everybody could enjoy. And the one thing that that makes sense to do is cards. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, cause that's what they all enjoy, right? So how do you bring cards to the world? Well, I figured the best way to do it was with the card shop. I want one of these so bad, Jeff. What's, oh, I know. Now, where are you at? I can't believe how small it is. What, what's, your, what's your number? We're like close to 50. Yeah, you'll get there. This morning we were like 50 away from 300,000. Oh my God, I'm on, so let's... curious. Dude, your numbers are insane. Oh, oh bro. sick. Got it. Oh, let's go. <laughs> got it, got it. That was crazy. Got it, dude. That's so cool. It's exactly at 300K. <laughs> That's so cool. That's so cool. Like to the to the dime. Congratulations. Wow, man, that's dude. awesome, that man. Sick. Thank you. I'm, that was crazy. That was, cool. that was so really freaking cool. cool, man. So I'm finally in the studio. Yeah, this is it. And I told you, first thought I, I was thinking was, we could be shooting a YouTube video, and if you look over there, yeah, it's like Good Morning America. That's right. You can was see that, the was that the inspiration shot. here? Yeah, uh, yeah, that was the idea. Yeah, so we're hoping we're gonna post. So everything we everything we do on our YouTube, we're now gonna film in here, like top five cards and everything, and we're gonna post the schedule 
for when we're going to be filming it every week. Wow. So what we're hoping is that people, you know, people will be in the shop and we're hoping people will actually kind of come over and maybe watch through the glass and everything wow. like that. And so when you're watching the show, you'll see people and interactivity in the background. This would be mainly for content. Like if you brought an athlete in and you wanted to rip cards, yes. I could be sitting here yeah. and like, Back home, I mean, our friends could be here in the back. That's right, exactly. So people will, will come in. Will people be able to hold signs up, or are we gonna have quality control? I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> like see. TRL. May, maybe. Could you yeah. imagine? Like <laughs> maybe it depends what the signs are. Or we'll have like see. a rope section. Yeah, yeah, something like that. So That's hopefully, cool. I mean, it'd be cool if it gets to that point where like people come in just to watch it be filmed. Wow. But yeah, that was the idea. The idea was like, how do we, like, once again, that general concept of like, how do we bring our audience who maybe can't come to Atlanta, how do we let them experience the shop? And so one of the ideas was, well, while we're filming our content, why don't we just have the shop in the background? And people can kind of see what's going on that day and who's in the aisles and oh. what's the energy like and yeah. everything like that. And you know, I think it'll just be kind of a cool tie-in. Is it, was it sad? Cause you said you're letting go of the, the original office. Was yeah. it, if, did you feel like, did you, have you said goodbye or have you done the goodbye yet? I haven't said goodbye, but honestly, there's just so much excitement around this thing that I'm, I'm not, I'm like, I'm not, it was wonderful and it was great. And we did so much good stuff there. But when you're going from something like something cool to something that's like 10 X better, like I, I don't miss the old thing so much. I'm just excited about this. What were some of the difficulties or challenges um, or maybe something that held you up on the shop? Like while you're, in the process like what were some of the challenges you went through here i mean honestly probably the biggest challenge has just been getting enough inventory um and you know uh, trying to realize the realization that we got all these showcases to fill all these you know wax you know wax boxes we're going to need and everything like that and so that's you know my partners ryan and carter they've been at all over the country at a card show almost every single weekend since the beginning of october just buying 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 and so we've got a, we got a good amount, but then you know it's already we're already we got still got got a bunch of holes in the showcases to fill. So we need to get more and more inventory. Um, you know, obviously managing the build out. You know, there were some things that came up. It was a lot certainly time intensive, but for the most part, construction went more smoothly than it sometimes goes. Right? You hear a lot of construction project nightmares. We got lucky. We hired a great contracting firm, a great design firm. They all did a fantastic job and it stayed relatively on schedule. So that part actually went okay. It was just more of getting the inventory already. Um, obviously we had to do a lot of hiring um, and, and uh, thankfully we found some really good people, but we still need to hire some more people too. Uh, so, you know, just getting all of that in line. When you were going into this, talking about hiring, obviously you want to hire people that are pretty invested into cards to some extent. What went into the hiring process for you? Yeah, so like one thing we did is during the interviews we actually tested people on card knowledge so so what we did is we tried to simulate it a little bit like if they were a customer like if they were servicing a customer in the store so we brought a stack of cards into the interview and i put the cards out in front of them and so for example i put i put like some modern football cards like a jalen hurts and a and a you know a joe burrow and a justin herbert and so i i was like i pretended like i was a customer i was like hey i was like I need to get a card for my 11 year old kid uh, for his birthday. Uh, which of which of these three would be the better card to buy? And then just see how the person answers the question, right? And, and you get all kinds of different answers to that. It's really interesting. Yeah, so but then, it probably didn't matter which player. Was it more about how they were describing it? Yes, it was more about the thought process. And it was. And you know what the best answer to that question is? What? The best answer to that question is start is asking questions. So some people like what's his favorite team? Some some yes. Some people would go. Oh, you should buy the you know the Justin Herbert because he's got the most upside, or oh, you should buy this one because it's Prism, you know, or something like that. But then some people were like, uh, "Well, um, what's does he? Or what's his favorite team? Does he watch a lot of football? You know, are these the right things? Has he said that he has a favorite quarterback of any type? Has he opened cards before? Does he know like certain sets over other sets? Like they would start by asking questions. I'm like. That's good. It feels like a, a Jordan Belfort, like sell me this pen and like getting the check out. Like you gotta get, you gotta get more like yeah. substance out of that. So that's bit. pretty, that's pretty interesting. Yeah. I'd imagine like, I mean, how many people do you have working for you now, right now? We've got about, we've hired about 20 for Cards HQ. Okay. And then we've also have our sports card investor team and you know, we, and our market movers team. So in total, when you combine the two, we're 45, I think right now, 45. Um, about 45 people across the two. Um, we need to hire, especially as we get going with breaking and live selling, we're going to need to hire a few more people, certainly for Cards HQ to kind of round that out. So I think in total, 
we'll be around 50 probably when we're kind of fully operational. You're passionate about it. Mm-hmm. And at the same time, it, it probably is the most fun business you've ever run. Oh, ever, yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. A thousand percent. Like there's nothing that could compare to a ho- running a hobby and a business. Oh, a thousand percent. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm this. I'm I'm super excited and passionate about being able to do this. And yeah, it's like the ultimate dream. It's like. I think we can make some money with it. I think we will make some money with it. Obviously, that's the plan. It's a business. Any business you want to make money, I think we can make money. But it's like the fun of it, the thrill of it, the giving the experience to the people coming in the store, the building the hobby, the getting to share with my own kids. I mean, my own kids are like, this is like, I mean, you, can, you know, I, I think about like when I was totally into cards, when I was 10, when I was 12. And like, oh my God, if my dad, you know, were to open up a card shop, that would have been like the greatest moment, you know, that I would have ever experienced as a kid. And so now like getting to do that and getting to experience that moment with like my kids, like that's pretty damn cool. And so like seeing, you know, seeing kids come in and get excited about it and everything like that, like it's super rewarding. Yeah. One thing I love about cards, and I know you probably experienced this as well, is like it cards is a fun thing. When people walk into the shop, they're in a good mood. They're getting to do something they like. They're getting to do something they love. They're getting to do a hobby. They're getting to something they really deeply care about and they're passionate about. So people are happy. Like people are happy. I think that as I think when we open the doors and people start coming into the store, people are just going to be in a good mood here. And that's cool because so many different types of businesses you don't really deal with like people in a good mood. There's just so many types of businesses where it's fine, like you get your work done and it's transactional, and yet this can be that. Exactly. And so that's, it's really exciting. And I've said that, like this hobby, I I say it's the greatest hobby in the world. Well, let's add some substance to it. It's because the people, it's the energies, it's the, it's the passion, you know, it's contagious. And I think when people go to card shows, it is a good vibe. There's not really like, you know, obviously there's some things that happen and that's just, that's like everything. Like there's bad, bad situations happen, but the good in the hobby outweighs the bad to me. Yeah. And like, I think that's what we have here. Well, Jeff, thanks for showing us around. Yeah, it's been great. It's been great. You guys are open seven days a week here yeah, in Atlanta. We will be, yeah, we're opening up and then soon we'll be streaming as well. So for people around the world. Streaming live on Whatnot, what else? Yeah, we're gonna be on Whatnot at first for sure. And then we'll probably dabble into some of the other platforms as well, Fanatics Live, that kind of thing too. And of course our own YouTube is a great way for people to just continue to check out what we're up to. That's awesome. Well, hey, if you guys are ever in Atlanta, you guys gotta come check out the shop. Jeff is a great host. He has an awesome team here. The prices are ridiculous, which you guys have seen in our videos for their slabs. And you guys can come over, hang out, open some boxes. And if you want to come watch a ball game, I'm sure Jeff would love to watch a game with you. Yeah, let's let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do some trades. If you guys enjoyed this video, please drop a like, leave a comment. Don't forget to subscribe. And also, guys, we're streaming live on Whatnot every single week, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Use that link down below. We'll see you guys for the next video. Thank you, Jeff. Yeah, man. Thank you so much, man. I appreciate you.